Ah, so before we start working on building the frame, we first have to thank Go Power Sports for sending us these parts that we're going to be using for this project. Now, we have a ton of inch and a quarter bearings, we have a bunch of steering components like rack and pinion, steering wheel, steering columns, master cylinders, brake calipers, hydraulic lines, and also the brake discs that are already on the front hubs. Links for everything in the description below. Go check it out. Uh, tell Go Power Sports that I sent you. Really helps my channel out. I'm pretty sure this is not everything we're going to be using for this project. There's always more stuff I need to add on later. So uh, if I add more stuff, I will add that to the links in the description. Uh, but for now, let's start working on uh, building the frame.
So I know some of you guys are looking at this wondering what in the world's going on. Why is the engine over here? What is that transmission? How is this going to work? So let me take a moment to explain the setup of the rear suspension. So basically what this is, it's fully independent, long travel, chain driven, trailing arm suspension. I think that's how you describe this, I'm pretty sure. Um, let me try to explain the setup of this. So basically, I'm going to modify the, the sprocket on the engine to stick out to here. There's going to be a bearing on this side, so it'll be fine. So there's going to be a chain going from the engine to this transmission. I'll explain about this in a second. There's going to be another sprocket on the transmission that goes to the inch and a quarter axle. That axle connects the trailing arms to the rest of the frame. There's going to be more sprockets going from the axle to the sprocket on the hub on both tires and that is going to run both tires. So there's going to be chains you know going from here to the transmission to the axle then back to the tires. It's a little bit complicated. It's a lot more complicated than a setup that's you know that uses uh, CV axles but this way it's more of a compact design and it will give us almost two feet of rear suspension travel and that is why I am choosing uh, this setup. Now lately I've been really trying to figure out how to add reverse to a project like this. Now there are companies that you can buy these little gearboxes that will hold up the, to the horsepower of these engines. It's essentially just a forward reverse gearbox. But the price range of those is in the thousands. There's one company that I looked up that's actually still making them. Most of the companies I've seen just don't make them anymore. Uh, the price range was like over $3,000. So a little over my price range for just a forward reverse gearbox. So we are going to be using this. This is a three speed and reverse transmission I found at the scrapyard. I paid a whopping $10 for this thing. I have no idea how old this is or what model this is off of. I, I'm pretty sure this is like off of an old car, but uh, there are numbers on here. I have Googled them and nothing has showed up that's a transmission. Um, I've done posts on Instagram showing the numbers, asking everybody, does anybody know what this is off of? And nobody knows anything about Everybody has like a different guess at, at what this could be. So I'm pretty sure nobody has any idea. All I really know is it's a transmission and we're going to be using it for this. I'm really hoping this is going to hold up to the horsepower of this engine. I'm pretty sure it will. This is a, you know, it's a transmission for a car. This thing's really beefy, so I'm pretty sure it'll hold up. It is missing the top shifter plate. I will have to make that. Um, or if I can find the model of what, you know, what this thing is, I can hopefully buy it. Now we do have six gears on the engine and then three gears on this. So essentially this is like a high, medium and low transmit so we're gonna have low range for this machine which is awesome and uh, also means we're gonna have six reverse gears so that'll definitely be interesting So I'd say we got a decent amount of work done on the frame, considering this is part one, not part one, this is part three, but you know, this is the first video that we've been working on the frame. I know it doesn't look like we got much work done, but you know, before I'm able to start cutting and bending material, I first have to come up, come up with a plan on where everything's going to go and how everything's going to work, and that takes the longest. Now that we have that out of the way, now that we know where everything's going to go, now it's just pretty much, you know, just cut and bend and tack material together. So it's pretty much just the easy stuff from now on. So now as far as the size of this thing, I know you guys are going to be saying, you know, make this as small and compact as possible, which I am trying to do, 
but I'm more focused on having really long travel suspension and uh, all that. This is pretty. This this thing is pretty much similar size to a Polaris Razor 1000, so it's not that big. Uh, this this thing will fit on trails just fine. Let's say that. Now I need you guys help with something. I need you guys help with coming up with a name for this project. I think I've been calling this just the VF1000, not the VF1000, the CBR1000 off-road buggy, which is a super boring generic name. Uh, I know I suck at coming up with names for projects, so I need you guys help with coming up with a good name for this. As far as what this thing's gonna look like, I'm trying to model this after uh, a, a sand rail. I want this thing to kind of look like an off-road-ish version of a sand rail. You know, the, with the sand rails with the engines sticking out the back end and uh, the really sleek looking ones. So that's something to keep in mind when trying to come up with a name for this project. And the reason for trying to make this thing look like a miniature sand rail is because I do want to eventually take this to the dunes. Uh, don't live anywhere near the dunes, but I don't mind driving a couple thousand miles to take this to the dunes, that would be, that'd be pretty awesome. Now obviously next video is just going to be continuing working on the frame, adding more stuff here and there, and possibly starting on the rear suspension, but uh, that's going to have to be for next video. We also have to thank Go Power Sports for sending us the parts that we're going to be using for this project, links for everything in the description below, go check that out. I gotta end this video here, thank y'all for watching, I'll see ya in the next video. Okay.